So, hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and um, thank you, thank you for, we achieved a thousand subscribers like three days ago and we did a little live party with some, with some friends and so yeah, I'm very happy, uh, we finally made it, it took uh, two and a half years and uh, hundreds of hours and 94 videos, so yeah, 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 um, so the, the, the goal was never to make like a big channel, the goal was always to research study ancient egypt and then share with you uh what i study what i learned you know and in a very transparent and honest way i, I don't pretend to be an expert or of anything you know so um to, to what we're gonna do today today we're going to to deep dive a little bit in the temple of horus in edfu and i choose to do this temple because first of all this is the last temple we're gonna do and as the last temple, I chose to do a Ptolemaic temple and uh, from the period of the Ptolemies and, um, and this is the best preserved uh, of them and probably the best preserved Egyptian temple uh, so <laughs> we're gonna see a lot of, lot, of, lot of very interesting stuff and so yeah make sure you subscribe maybe so maybe we can make make it to 2000 subscribers in the next uh, six years i don't know uh so and like the video if you if you like the video so what you can see here this is the river nile on the right this is the fields on the left and this is the city of edfu nowadays the town and you can see the 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 temple of horus is is here now I never been there I don't know what it is but it seems to me that this part it's like above the ground you know it's like well, it's not above the ground <laughs> it's uh, it's on an altitude uh, but maybe I'm wrong yeah? it, might, it doesn't have to be um, and uh, what you can see is is oriented south north this is not the first time we see a temple oriented south north okay and uh, but normally there will be north south right like Luxor temple for example is north south but the temple of Khonsu in the Karnak precinct uh, of Amun Ra that that's that's south north so um, uh, I I don't know why they chose to make south north orientation uh, normally uh, they are either parallel to the Nile or orthogonal <laughs> uh, but you know it's not really a rule actually um, so so this is the temple from the top and uh, from Google and what you can see you can clearly distinguish a little a little it's not little uh, a courtyard uh, in front of the pylon okay and you can distinguish the pylon and actually it's so well preserved that you that the pylon even the pylon itself it's it's super well it's just look I'm gonna show you some pictures later but it's 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 extremely well preserved so uh, then we can we c you can see there is a courtyard here then you can see the temple okay and as you can see as you as you know temples in ancient Egypt were, were always divided into public and private areas right like out of the public or for the public and uh, you can see there is a space in between the temp the inner temple here and the outer wall now this is key, this is key for this temple. The interstate, you know, the, the, the space in between is where you find the text of the story that is supposed to be, <laughs> in, uh, for, for some people, is, to, is supposed to be the story of Atlantis, but it's the story of the creation myth uh, of, of the ancient Egyptian civilization. So it's one of them. They have many creation myths, and this is one of them. And don't forget this is a Ptolemaic temple it's a temple that was built in 237 BC okay after even after Alexander the Great the Great Alexander so so how genuine is how genuine are the texts that we find in this temple you know that's the question uh, we know this temple we don't know we we there are some evidences that the temple sits above an an, er, an earlier temple but not earlier than than the middle kingdom okay so um, there isn't really much but there is some evidence of that 
uh, because they found like some some uh, pieces of stone with the name of pharaohs from the Middle Kingdom, okay, uh, buried in the ground. So you know, that's a little. You know, and not only that, they also found from the period of the of the New Kingdom, okay. So yeah, just just so you know that the text that we find in this temple. They could be from the Ptolemaic temple. I mean, they for sure they are from the Ptolemaic temple, but some of them might come from an earlier time, but not older than the Middle Kingdom, as far as we know. Uh, look, late, like uh, in the last month or so, um, I, I always ignored this, 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 this artist, David Roberts, but now I can't ignore him anymore. He's my second painter. Uh, it's my second favorite painter and uh, he did I, I think this is the best painting of ancient Egypt to me uh, because first of all you can see the temple of Edfu from the north to the south okay so you can see in front of you is the is the pylon and then we sit above the sand that used to cover the pronaos is the Greek name of the antechamber of the hypostyle hall. Let's call it this way. It's not an antechamber. It's it's uh, before the hypostyle hall. Okay, and I remember this seeing this picture many many years ago in university for a for a for a, for a course I did uh, in Orientalism. It was a course. It was a philosophy course, and I remember this. I remember this image. You know. Uh, but I never saw it again. Uh, so I saw it now when I was researching this temple. I went, wow, finally I saw it back again. Now I can't forget anymore. David Roberts, guys, check the work of this guy. He did an amazing, he just amazing guy, amazing painter. And what can you see here is something interesting. So this is not the first time we see this, right? We saw it with Ramses II as well. So. I don't understand fully the symbolism behind this, but I can tell you some things. This is the SunDisk Ra that is uh, merged with the, um, uh, how do you say, <laughs> oh my god, in my English now, <laughs> with the, oh my god, the, the, oh, the wings, the wings of Horus, okay? The, and Horus is bringing the Sun God Ra to the sky, so that's why it's called uh, Ra Horakti, which is supposed to be mean Ra that flies to the sky with Horus. Okay, this is what I understood. And you can s distinguish two little snakes here. Apparently, the snakes they don't they sleep they sleep with open eyes. I mean, at least some of them. So the idea is that um, y you will always have gods never sleep. The, the gods never sleep. And so you will find this symbol in every gates of this temple, not every, like, not the, the major ones. Okay, so this is to say, like, uh, it's basically a symbol of protection uh, of the temple. Like, right? it's it's basically Ra um, Horakti watching over watching over you. And yeah, I mean, I just wanted to show you that. Uh, because we still have the colors uh, in the pylon uh, of that um, uh, of that symbol, so this is how it, how it looked like um, before it was fully excavated by Auguste Mariette in 1860. So you can see here there is some sand, right? There was si there was still some sand around here, and this is Auguste Mariette, right? The now Auguste Mariette, I, I you know I, I am confused sometimes. I don't. You know, I might confuse some names, but if I'm not wrong, Auguste Mariette is actually the guy that was responsible to create the very first version of the Cairo Museum in Egypt. So he used to make, uh, you know, trades with art artifacts, but then later on he understood that a museum was necessary. So I don't know the full story, but yeah, he he's probably the you know the first one who ever built the Museum of Cairo, or at least the first collection in Cairo. And um, this is a picture from the 19, you know, early 1900s, and you can see it was cleared from the sand, and they created here a gate, <laughs> you know, for people to prohibit people to enter. And uh, you can see here, 
I'm gonna show you later uh, with a better with a better definition. But this is the symbol, right? It's above every gate here. You can see it here. You can see it here, and you can see other in other in other places. The pylon, as you can see, it's you know, it's basically like a new kingdom pylon. Like I don't see much, you know difference with what it could have been the Karnak one or you know Luxor it's pretty much it's pretty much the same thing it's a although it's a, it's a Ptolemaic temple um, so one wonders the influence of Greek culture in this temple and I'm not sure if there is much because in Dendera you can see there is this zodiac in the ceiling and uh, I didn't study that but um, I wonder how Egyptian is that zodiac I wonder if that zodiac is actually an invention from the Greeks that you know put it on the ceiling of the Dendera temple um, but in here we don't have we don't we don't have much you know and uh, as you can see between the columns you have the walls okay and this is something that is very Ptolemaic to do this is this is the, the, the you know pretty much one of the only Ptolemaic things that is very distinguishable from from other temples if it is a Ptolemaic temple you can see there is a wall um, you, uh, between the columns uh, in the in the in, in the space that we can see now it's called the pro now so it's before before the nows now you know it's it's the sacred area okay in, but it's a greek name so naturally it's actually appropriate to use pronouns uh, because it's a it's from the greek time here um, it's from the greek time but uh, it's an egyptian temple so this is the thing when they arrived in egypt this is the proof this temple is the proof that demonstrate how much the greeks respected the local culture and uh, you know and so so much so that they didn't build the Parthenon in Egypt you know they didn't build the same way that they used to in Greece but in, in Egypt when they conquered Egypt no they continued building uh, with Egyptian standards uh, in the Egyptian way with Egyptian hieroglyphs uh, with Egyptian people uh, with Egyptian labor Egyptian materials Egyptian in Egy on Egyptian land so everything is Egyptian here. So when people say, oh, well, but this is not an Egyptian temple. It is, it's an Egyptian temple. There is nothing Greek here. Apart from these walls that are in between the columns, which uh, you don't even see in Greece. So anyhow, uh, even the columns here. So this is from the Ptolemaic period. Like, as you can see, this is a Lotus one and, uh, or a palm. It's actually, I never, <laughs> it's probably a palm. And this is the Lotus on the, uh, on the left. So, but this one here, it looks like more of a Corinthian column, right? So maybe, maybe that's a, maybe that's a Ptolemaic influence. Like a, maybe that's a Greek influence, right? But uh, I'm not sure because uh, ancient Egypt has so many capitals and difference. And uh, I, I never really distinguish the Lotus from the, from the palm, uh, from the, uh, from other, from the papyrus. This is not papyrus. Okay. This is not papyrus. But to me, it's either a Corinthian one or it's either a Lotus one. So let's see, because the Lotus one is, is supposed to be this one here. Anyway, let's go ahead. This is the temple, how it looked like uh, in the early 1900s when the flights uh, above, you know, when, um, when the first uh, um, airplanes were invented, you know. And um, as you can see, it's, it's, it's an amazing, because normally like when you go to Egypt you can see some 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 buildings are well preserved but you can see the modern concrete sometimes this repairing the old structures but in this case this is this is you know this is it this is there is no you know there isn't much uh, preservation on in concrete here this is the original temple uh, and this is this picture shows it right the plan, allora, the plan. So the plan is pretty much, it, 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 the beautiful thing about this plan is it's very synthetic, simple, straight to the point, rational, um, symbolic, 
and pretty much in tune uh, with, with, with the standards of New Kingdom um, architecture. Uh, it's just synthetic, so it's not Karnak, it's not Luxor Temple, right? It's not full of different elements. This is a one pylon temple, it's just one pylon, you know. Uh, we have a one courtyard, one pronounce, one small hypostyle hall. It's not, you know, it's not a big hypostyle hall. And then we have a sanctuary. And in the sanctuary, we have a series of chapels with a corridor around. And, uh, and the Holy of Holies in the middle with a letter H, okay? So it's a very simple, very simple temple. Uh, and this is why uh, I love I love this plan because it's very synthetic. It's everything, everything is here. Uh, everything about Egypt is here. And uh, you can see there is some curious stuff here. So you can see here on the left, this is a stair going up to the roof. Of course, they probably needed some maintenance from time to time. So that's how I explain this. But that's a very long stair to make, right? Because back then they, they knew how to make like folding stairs. So, but sometimes you have these very long stairs and I love them. Um, another thing uh, is that you, there is, uh, I will show you later, there is, a, there is a hole in the floor somewhere in this area where you can go down on a crypt. I'm gonna show you later. So here is the evidence of older temples, right? So um, uh, remains of a monumental entrance from the New Kingdom Temple have been find, I mean, have been found uh, with the name of Ramses. Um, below the pavement of the forecourt, okay, so the forecourt must be this one here, the letter D, uh, or the C, uh, one of them. Uh, fragments of reused sandstone bear the name of King Jehuti, perhaps of Dynasty 13, okay, so Middle Kingdom. And you know that's 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 what we got. Like it's not much, but there is some indication that might have been founded ab above an earlier temple. So, and another thing, it's very nice to 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 see. I'm not sure if Karnak has this detail, but look at these corners. This is uh, I I don't recall having seen this detail uh, before. So this is a rounded ornamental framing in stone of the whole building. Like it's not just in the pylon, it's up, it's yeah, it's everywhere. And uh, I don't recall to have seen this element before. So, um, so the, yeah, this is something new and it's probably a Ptolemaic thing. Um, this, this pylon, if I'm not wrong, is 36 meter tall. Now, 36 meter tall is taller than the Abu Simbel temple. Like it's, it's taller than the mountain of Abu Simbel. <sighs> and uh, if uh, you are you you, I think you can access the top, like the top of the tower here. Uh, yeah, so you can see here there are stairs. So you you know maybe you can't do go there uh, as a tourist, but. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's accessible the top here so imagine there is a there are two stairs one one here in the middle and one here and they both go uh, to the top so imagine the view that you got from there uh, so 36 meters is 10, is, 10 is, is a building of, of 10 floors so 10 floors uh, this is the courtyard from the north to the south watching Towards the looking towards the pylon, and uh, you can see this is a this is is a standard courtyard. You know, it's not as impressive as Luxor uh, or, or or Karnak, but yes. Yeah, so uh, it's still the impressive thing here is the pylon. It's it's, it's amazing, and uh, one wonders how it would have looked like you know when uh, in the times of in these times, like in the eighteen hundreds when. Uh, I would, uh, you know, it would be nice to sit above the sand and touch the ceiling, you know. And the reason why a lot of the ceiling here is burnt is because is actually because of the sand. So the sand is here. People were were standing there making fires, and the fires will, um, you know, uh, put burn the ceiling. Okay, uh, that's why a lot of the ceiling is burnt. Uh, 
uh, at this point so so yeah so this is the okay so in the in the facade here of the pronouns you can distinguish two statues one left and one right uh, they are both Horus statues right and if I'm not wrong this left one is probably the biggest statue of Horus ever found but I'm not sure because I remember one in Cairo museum that, that was big so I don't I'm not sure if this is the biggest um, but it's isn't it in granite yeah it's probably granite um, I mean it's beautiful right but it doesn't seem very happy <laughs> Um, so you see the ceiling here it's pretty much burnt uh, so and this is inside of the pronouns so um, color the, co the columns are beautiful you can see the columns here oh, actually I forgot something to show you in the facade of the pillow you can see the colors you can distinguish the original colors you see a little bit a little bit the blue the yellow the red okay so as you can see the the symbol that I was explaining to you before so I mean it's beautiful it's really beautiful it's a Ptolemaic temple it's, it's full of hieroglyphs and uh, <laughs> and it's very well preserved like Dendera, Dendera, Dendera I also wanted to study Dendera so maybe I make an exception I might I might show you Dendera next time but I, I promised myself that they would, this would have been the last temple uh, so to me this seems to this is the lotus okay this is the lotus capital okay uh, this is probably a palm and this is I don't know what this is <laughs> what capital is this probably again another lotus um, yeah so this you know you can clearly see how it was burned and this is the sanctuary area so beyond the hypostyle hoard there is a sanctuary and it, 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 still in place there is this bark okay which I'm gonna show you soon this is the ceiling how beautiful that is how beautifully preserved is at least these parts you know the beams and um, again this is the sanctuary and um, in the sanctuary you can see the clear axis uh, that uh, as a, every every temple in Egypt uh, inside of, of the Holy of Holies you know the, the most holy of, of the sanctuary it's this object which uh, I understood to be um, uh, it's, not, it's not the Ark of the Covenant but basically it's 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 an Ark okay and you would you would have put inside of it the incense and oils and things like that would smell good to make a procession okay so i don't know anything else about this but this is just you know i wanted to show you something that looked like the ark of the covenant uh, and this is where the incenses and perfumes would have been or maybe the statue of of horus or something i i'm not sure now, this is a, an amazing picture of the space of, of the corridor okay so around the holy of holies i have this i have this mosque so i i, I don't know this mosque this uh, mosquito so you can see the space h around the space h there is this corridor here that gives access to these chapels okay and this is the space we are looking in this picture okay it's beautiful and uh, beautiful place and it's full of hieroglyphs you know and not just hieroglyphs like reliefs of Horus and the stories and etc I wish I could read hieroglyphs but uh, <laughs> it would take me ages to to go through all of this and you can see the same detail of the rounded stone everywhere even in the Holy of Holies at the back of the Holy of Holies right um, so this is the light coming from the top and this is the detail of the wall this is the stairs going up to the roof this is a series of reliefs and uh, I you know I don't you know I don't know much but probably the faces were taken off by the Romans or the or the Christians and uh, this is the outer wall so this is where it's not the outer wall this is in the, the space in between that I was telling to you right it's a uh, it's, it's this space here this huge C 
around the temple and in this in these walls you can find the, st the story of Atlant of Atlantis it's not the story of Atlantis but y you know what I mean uh, the, the creation myth and also the story of Horus against Seth okay the the brother of Osiris and um, yeah I mean and this is the first time we can see the back of a temple I never saw this before we, we never I never saw a picture of, of the back of a temple and how amazing is this wall you have a huge propaganda wall to put everything you want it, it's it's amazing and again you see the detail of the ornament here it's everywhere you see it's that rounded stone framing beautiful temple thank thanks god this is preserved uh because okay so this is the hole in the ground where that leads to a crypt um i have not found any information about this crypt uh but there are pictures on the isidaproject.org but you know this is the space so the yeah <laughs> there isn't there isn't, there isn't much there. There are no hieroglyphs. There are no reliefs. There are. It's it's pretty much blocks of stones with mortar. And uh, I really wonder what kind of stone is this because it seems to be a dark one. Um, yeah, I don't know what to make of this. I mean, it's just what is this? You know, <laughs> why was it here? Maybe to hide something. Maybe to hide the hide of the the ark of the covenant. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, again, Jean-Claude Golvan uh, is the best uh, to depict what ancient Egyptian buildings would have looked like. It's very accurate. And uh, as you can see, uh, this has four uh, huge wooden you know, poles. And uh, you can see the hole here on the roof. So that's, that's, that's where the stairs, you will access the stairs and you will access the roof. Um, I mean this is probably like a procession going on here ah yes with the bark here and uh, yeah I mean I, I'm always outstanding by by the level of quality of these drawings go visit the site of this guy it's it's amazing it's, he's amazing he, he made so many of these so many uh, so this is, I want to leave you with uh, with the last uh, thing here. So the creation myth of the Temple of Edfu consists of several related scenes, which are found primarily on the inside of the perimeter walls of the temple, as I was saying to you, right? They tell the story of the beginning of the world, when it was still entirely covered by water. Okay? During the struggle between land and primeval water, the land managed to come close to the surface, to the surface. Uh, where this happened, reeds grew with the help of a falcon, which were strengthened by the gods, the far and the large. The reeds were the germ cell for the temple of Edfu, and here Horus landed as a falcon. A force approached in the form of a bird and fed Horus, the lord of Edfu. This ritual was the beginning of the cult of Edfu. The snake like Apophis tried to impede the creation Apophis is supposed to be like uh, Satan or something like that um, Apophis is like it's, it's, a, it's a, really, a really bad figure Horus shuddered in fear yet a harpoon one of the forms of Ta came to the rescue okay the enemy was defeated and the creation continued a falcon formed by a falcon formed the sky dome its wings reaching from horizon to horizon and the sun began its daily cycle then the first temple of Edfu was designed by the gods Toph and Sheshat one responsible for, one responsible for wisdom obviously we know Toph and the other for scripture okay Sheshat the godly master builder constructed the temple according to these plans but initially not of stone but of reed which is very interesting the foundation ritual of the temple consists of multiple elements. First, the ground plan was laid out with the stretching the cord ritual. Stretching the cord ritual. Stretching the cord is something that they do still nowadays, sometimes uh, in India, if I'm not wrong. Before they actually start to build, they, you know, they, 
they go with the four corners they stretch the cord around I think something like that when the construction was completed the king handed the temple over to the triad of gods the pro to protect the building against external threats 60 gods formed a living wall around the temple well I mean I don't know I mean this is Wikipedia I don't <laughs> I just wanted to, yeah, to tell you a little bit about the creation myth here. Look, as I was saying, I, I hope you enjoy. And um, yeah, this temple was a, was a pretty much, you know, uh, the, the big thing here is actually to be able to translate the hieroglyphs of the story. And that's the interesting juicy part of this temple. But I, again, we, are, we, we talk about architecture here. We don't talk much about myths and stuff. So yeah, I mean, I wanted to show you what this is uh, it's pretty amazing and the next time I will before going back to I will go back to pyramids and uh, I will study the pyramids after Khufu okay so we'll do Kefra we we'll do Menkaure we'll, we'll do Jejefre we we'll do all of them uh, but before, before we do them I will make a special episode on the great pyramid of Khufu because I will do a lecture here in the town so wait for that okay well see you soon guys and have a good uh, day bye bye